Hey, I'm Chris, and this is MMA for You. I'm going to be doing my predictions for UFC 204, Bisbing vs. Henderson 2, which happens on October 8th. But before I get into that, I'd like to plug my own author's website at www.chrismaldon.com. I am an author specializing in the fantasy genre, and you can buy some of my works, starting with my first novel, an action adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for $4.99 on my website on PDF format or if you have some sort of e-reader like a Kindle you can buy it for $4.99 on Amazon.com also for just $1.99 on my website or on Amazon.com you can buy some of my short stories or short story collections starting with uh, the fantasy horror short story uh, The Land of the Wooden Statues which I'm trying to make into a full novel uh, the Horror Collection, which is a compilation of three of my gothic horror short stories. And the Fantasy Fable Collection, which is a compilation of four of my Fantasy Fable short stories. Uh, links to buy these will be, will be provided in the descriptions, uh, along with a link to my Twitter page, a link to my author's Facebook page, and a link to my author's YouTube page. Uh, on that author's YouTube page, I actually have a new short story reading of this, um, I guess, comedy called uh, The Next Level that, you know, if you're into that, um, I think you'd enjoy. So, uh, let's get on to this card. Um, you know, I'm not huge on the main event, like Bisbing versus Henderson on a merit. Um... On like a merit-based like uh, title shot, I guess. But I, it is intriguing uh, for sure, to, knowing the history of Henderson and Bisbang and just what's at stake at this time. Uh, I, I believe Hendo is retiring, uh, win or lose after this fight. Uh, you got a good fight also. Uh, Velvet versus Musasi was a fight that was supposed to happen like way back in affliction I mean this is a fight that has been trying to get made for years and it's it's kind of like um Arlovsky versus Barnett and it's like finally happening years after like it's been like proposed and then dropped and then like it gets you know it gets proposed again and it gets dropped and whatnot. Uh, OSP fights Manoa. That's actually a pretty fun fight. You got a heavyweight fight between Struve and Om Omelianchuk. Uh, I don't know if that's a pay per view, like, main card fight. Like, I think it's just an alright fight, to be honest with you. Uh, I do like that Mursad Mer Bektik's fighting. Uh, he's the opener on the main card. He's going to fight a prospect in Jeremy Kennedy. Um, I'm pretty high on Bektik. The prelims, uh, URL Contra versus Pickett could actually be a lot of fun. Font and Whistle, different stylistic matchup, but that could be fun. Grant versus Sajak actually isn't too bad. Um... Uh, I think that'll be a decent fight. And Edwards versus Tumanov is actually... Could be a sleeper fight, actually. As both guys like to stand. Epis are... Yeah, the fight past prelims. Perry versus Roberts. That actually looks really good. As far as just like a, a, an action fight goes. Martins versus Santos. Actually, very similar fighters here. Uh, I think... Stylistically, I don't know what to expect from the fight. But it is... An appropriate fight. I'm actually not too. Uh, uh, I'm actually pretty fond of that fight, to be honest with you. And uh, Dia Casey versus Madadi. Got a prospect versus a. I'd say a veteran. Uh, so you know those are very interesting and very hard to predict. So uh, let's get started. Okay, Michael the Count Bisming fights Dan Hendo Henderson. Henderson, 32 and 14 record, 16 wins by K.O. Tico, 2 wins by Sub. That says 3 losses by K.O. Tico and 4 losses by Sub. 46 years old, he's 6'1", training out of Team Quest. He's a former Strike Force light heavyweight champion, and he defeated Michael Bisming back in the UFC 100 by knockout uh, back in July of 2009. 
and it is still regarded as one of like the best knockouts of all time. Like, um, and to this day, you still see funny memes of that knockout uh, around. Right now, he's trading wins and losses. He actually came out. He's coming off a really a pretty solid win actually over Hector Lombard, where he knocked Lombard out with like a back elbow, <laughs> starting with a head kick. And then a back elbow. <laughs> uh, Hendo is really well known for his right hand. He did knock out Bisbing with his trademark left inside kick, right over over and right combo. It's one of his like go to combos, and you know he used that on Bisbing. Um, yeah, Hendo is heavy handed. He's good in the clinch and a really good clinch striker too. Uh, the thing with Hendo, you know, even though despite his accolades in wrestling, his takedown defense in MMA has always been a bit questionable. It's never been that great, actually. Uh, his chin is on the deep, is pretty much declining, and his overall skills are kind of declining too. You can tell he's just slow. Er, um, he moves a lot slower. Uh, his strikes are a bit slower doesn't take a, a hit as well as he used to his cardio is a bit questionable as well uh, Michael Bisming 29 and 7 record 16 wins by KO Tico 4 wins by sub that's a two losses by KO Tico 37 years old he's 6'2 on a four fight win streak training out of HB ultimate he is a current UFC middleweight champion uh, Bisming he mainly boxes and uses combinations. He's a high volume, like, well, I mean, he'll throw in kicks there, but he's pretty much like a high volume kickboxer. Uh, his cardio is outstanding. This guy goes five rounds a lot, and generally, the way he looks in the first round is generally how he'll look in the fifth round. And he's gone through a lot of five round fights. It's Anderson Silva, Talis Leites. Um, Tim Kennedy and that loss. Um, others too. I think there's others where didn't he go like it with Mayhem fourth round? So his, his cardio is really good. His counter wrestling and takedown defense is really good. He's hard to take down. He's hard to keep down if you try and take him down. Uh, if Bisman can get on top, his ground and pound is actually pretty vicious. He, he actually has some of the strongest ground and pound uh, I've seen. He postures up well. Um, and uh, really unloads ground and pound uh, really well. His stand-up defense is questionable. Not It's in the sense that this is a guy in Bisming that seems to get hit clean at least once and like dropped and or wobbled in a good portion of his fights. Uh, and it it runs the gamut of level of competition too. I mean, this is a guy that will get dropped by CB Dalloway by a left hook, you know, um, over and right by, uh, geez, I've got the Korean fighter's name way back in the day. Uh, Anderson obviously knocked him down. Uh, Rockhold in their first fight managed a head kick and wobble him. Um, so. He's just a guy that tends to get hit clean at least once in the fight. This fight, honestly, it's kind of weird because the way that title fights have been going and divisions without dominant champions makes it harder than it probably makes it harder to predict than it probably should be just because of that surprise factor and you know as improved as Bisming is I mean we've seen his weaknesses and it's not like that he beat Luke Rockhold in the first round that it's going that those magically go away you know um uh, you know, it's not like, oh, he's going to stop getting hit clean. You know, it's like, that doesn't happen, you know. I would be very surprised if that just magically happens. Um, 
and you know the, whether or not he has knockout power like one like that one punch knock, knockout power that we really showed against like Rockhold um it's it's still a it's still questionable you know this is a guy that historically I mean before he knocked out Rockhold in the first round. The last time he like knocked out a dude in the first round like standing was back in like two thousand nine or something like that. You know. Um nonetheless I think Bisbang if it goes long, five rounds, easily goes to Bisbang. As far as he's the fresher guy, Michael Bisbang. At thirty seven years old you know what the thing is though? It's 37. He has some mileage on him, Bisbang. But it's 37 years old, but at middleweight. And once you get to like 185, 205, and heavyweight, age, it, like, it seems that fighters are really putting it together later, not earlier, like in like welterweight or below. It seems like later things just start to come together for a lot of fighters. And you can see that with middleweights, too. Um, you know, Jacques Array, he's pretty old, for example. You know, just, just one example there. He, he's pretty old, but, like, it wasn't until pretty recently that he started to really put his striking together with his wrestling, with his, like, takedown ability, for example. Um, who else? Kennedy, you know, got one of the last guys to beat Bisbang, actually. Um, well, before Rockhold, uh, you know, that guy's mid-30s, you know, it's just, the, it seems like the older, or the higher up in weight, like, the older, being older does, isn't exactly the worst thing. Um, I think Hendo might, you know, there's a possibility of Hendo might getting knocked out here, like, Honest truth, just it, it could be an accumulation thing. I don't think it'll be a one punch thing, but you know, it could happen. He's just, he's 46, and the guy has a lot of mileage on him. And uh, as of late, it seems like he's getting knocked down in just about every fight he's, he's in. Uh, his chin isn't what it used to be. Hendo, honestly, I mean, if you if you're picking Hendo, it's I would assume it's be from knockout, and if it's from knockout, the the chances of a not not knockout happening are probably in the first or second round. Um, Bisping probably has at this point more ways of winning the fight, that including like a TKO victory, uh, and of course a decision victory. So with that said, I am gonna go with Michael Bisping to win this one. Uh, I just think that Hendo is on the decline. He's slower. I do worry that Bisbing is going to eat a right hand. I also do worry that championship fights seem to be so wonky, I guess is the word, that like anything seems to be able to happen in championship fights, including Bisbing knocking out Rockhold. If Henderson just knocks out Bisming in the first round in one way in one sense I will not be surprised just because that's how crazy title fights have been as of late and with divisions that don't have dominant champions uh, nonetheless uh, I, I like Michael Bisming here especially if it goes later I think that he his high volume striking will eventually chip away at Henderson uh, I don't really see the fight going to the ground too much. Uh, I think Bisming might actually be able to hurt Henderson, like, bad, too, some at some point in the fight. It wouldn't be surprising to see Henderson getting wobbled himself. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go safe here. I'll go Michael Bisming to win this one by decision with the possibility of a TKO victory. Uh, five rounds, like I said, doesn't really favor Henderson, in my opinion. Okay, next fight after that, 
After that, Vitor the Phenom Belfort fights Gegard the Dreamcatcher Musasi. Musasi, 39-6 and six record. Um, with two draws. Uh, where am I? Sorry, I lost my place. 39-6 and six record with two draws. 20 wins by K.O. Tico. 12 wins by Sub. Us has three losses by submission. 31 years old. He's 6-1 on a two-fight win streak. And he's a former Strike Force Light Heavyweight Champion. Musasi is a strong kickboxer, particularly good, he has a particularly good jab, something like the Leite's fight, um, and his first fight in the UFC against, uh, um, geez, uh, Aaliyah Latifi, uh, among other fighters as well. Musasi also has a good offensive takedown, but he has a judo background, if I'm not mistaken. And strong ground to pound. His Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills, both off his back and uh, and especially on top, are really strong as well. His takedown defense, it's actually improving, but it's still the weakest part of his game. Um, I've seen him sprawl a lot better and whatnot. I think. I, I, I think it's either he gets taken down. I think his takedown defense against the cage actually isn't that good sometimes, but his takedown defense, like in open space, is actually pretty good because he can sprawl. Or is it the opposite? Oh man, I'm thinking that like because I know Jacare was taking him down constantly up against the cage. Um. Yeah, actually, no, no, that's right. Yeah. Vitor Belfort, 25 and 12 record, 18 wins by K.O. Tico, 3 wins by Sub. He also has 5 losses by K.O. Tico and 2 losses by Sub. 39 years old, he's 6 foot and a former UFC light heavyweight champion. He's trading losses and wins right now, most recently losing to uh, Jacques Array. Uh Belfort's known for his stand-up. Uh, he has a way of blitzing opponents with his stand-up and is particularly heavy-handed. He actually has a really good head kick as well. State down defense actually isn't too bad. And he is a BJJ black belt himself. Um, he's not on TRT, so you can see that he's a bit slower. Probably doesn't take a hit as well as he used to. Um, and still has some of those like mental issues, or it seems like he kind of like mentally gives up. Um, with that said, though, I think Musasi is just the fresher guy at this point. Uh, Belfort's getting pretty old, up there in age at 39. Um, he's a case, though, where, like, well, no, you know, it's funny. He, he's a case where, like, when he was younger, he was all crazy good and kind of hit a prime. And then as he got older, and then he took to TRT, you can see his body changed. And then in his late age, he he actually got better. You know, it it, it, it almost, yeah, like, it, and then like, now he's on the decline. <laughs> um, well, anyways, like I said, I mean, Vitor Belfort, in my opinion, is kind of on the decline. Doesn't take his hit, a hit a, as well as he used to. Uh, uh, you know, might even have a hard time pulling the trigger. In the Jacare fight, he really showed that. But I think that was just against Jacare because he's worried about the takedown. Um, but like Musasi, like I said, he, he's just on a technical level. He has a really good jab. Uh, you know, good stand-up. Musashi's chin is actually still pretty good too. I mean, it took Uriah Hall a spinning back kick to the face, and then a flying knee to put him out. <laughs> so I mean, and he never, he never actually went out, you know, uh, to my knowledge. I, I don't think he actually totally went out. Um, but yeah, I, I think Musashi can actually at this point is probably going to be the better striker. I think Valfort is going to be the heavier-handed fighter, but um, I like Musashi to be able to utilize his jab. Um, eventually, once he starts like getting his jab going, uh, putting together some follow-up shots, and um, you know, I'm actually going to go with Gegard Musashi to win by KO or TKO. 
but it wouldn't surprise me to see like a Musashi Leite's fight maybe um that I'm also going with the fact that Falford seems to crumble a bit I don't know where he is mentally especially without, without the TRT as well um so yeah Gega Musashi KRT Gale next fight after that Jimmy po poster boy Manoa fights OSP of NSYNC Peru Manoa, 15 and 2 records, 13 wins by K.O. Tico, 1 win by Sub. He also has 2 losses by K.O. Tico. 36 years old, 6 foot, training losses and wins. He last fought in September of 2015. Uh, Manoa's stand up's good. Uh, he's particularly heavy handed. Uh, his knees are particularly strong. His grappling's actually improving too. Like, he will. Occasionally shoot for his own offensive takedown and his takedown defense actually isn't too bad. It's not great I mean like Alexander Gustafson was able to take him down over and over again But Gustafson also is like one of the most underrated wrestlers in the UFC pretty much a guy that took down like John Jones and Daniel Cormier So uh, I can't really hold that against Manoa uh, Vince St. Pru uh, Vince St. Peru 19 and 8 record, 9 wins by KRTK, 5 wins by Sub, 33 years old, he's 6'3, and he's trading losses and wins, most re recently losing to John Jones. Uh, the big thing about Ovin St. Pru is that he's just really athletic. This is a guy that can do very athletic things. He can go do a body kick to a double leg, he can get up in a way that is quick and athletic. Um. And so his athleticism has at times got him out of bad spots or, or helped or, or helped him. Uh, Vince St. Bruce wrestling is actually pretty good and he has some pretty strong ground and bound. And he's actually finished some guys at ground and bound. His stand up is good. He has a good left hand, but like it's not. It, it, it's weird because he, he'll also go for this like the most untechnical but he can get away with because he's athletic strikes like if you watch him fight like on a Bader or even Jones he can like run at his opponent like run at his opponent and, and just throw a left hand and his feet are not underneath him all the time so he always has this like thing where like he he never has seemed to put the technical in the uh, all together uh, standing but he is particularly heavy handed. Um, you know, I would argue that Mano is like the more technically sound fighter, but Ovin St. Peter is probably the better athlete and, uh, you know, has both wrestling and stand up to fall back on. Um, so, with that said, I, I, I'm going to pick Ovin St. Pru to win this one. I think that. St. Peru, like I said, he can get away with a lot of things because he's so athletic. And I think he can actually hit Manoa clean. And then if St. Peru needs to, he can always go back to his wrestling. He can take opponents down and uh, get the, maybe even get a ground and pound stoppage as well. So, with that said, I mean, when St. Peru fights can be kind of weird sometimes too. Like, he can have just some stinker fights against like John Volante. Or when he fought, like, uh, Fei Zhao, it wasn't that great. But, you know, he hurt his leg. Or uh, Vincent Pru, like, hurt his leg. Uh, but with that said, uh, like I said, I, I think St. Pru can actually get his own strikes in on Manoa. Mix in some wrestling. And I'm going to go Ovin St. Pru to win by KO or TKO. I right with that. Daniel Omelianchuk fights Stefan Skyscraper Struve. Omelianchuk, 19 and 5 record with one draw and one no contest. Three wins by KO Tico, nine wins by Sub. 34 years old, he's six foot on a three fight win streak. Um, Omelianchuk's something of a jack of all trades, master of none. His stand up's good. I, I believe he has a Muay Thai kickboxing. I oh, know, does he have a base there? Um. Well, anyways, he's actually shown some pretty good technical stand-up. And his overall grappling game isn't bad either. Like, his takedown defense isn't that bad. 
Uh, he can get fights to the ground. He has nine wins by sub. Um, you know, this is a guy that will beat or lose to an Anthony Hamilton, but then be, you know, be on this, like, three-fight win streak. It, it's heavyweight. You know, he's being good everywhere. It's going to help him, you know, get this far. He can beat guys that have noticeable flaws in their game. Um, Stefan Struve, 27 and 8 record, 8 wins by K.O. Tico, 16 wins by Sub. Also, has 6 losses by K.O. Tico, 28 years old. He's 7 foot. Dude, he's a foot taller than Emily Onchuk. Uh, Struve is trading losses and wins right now. Uh, his stand up is improving. He's always shown to be pretty heavy handed. And his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills are actually pretty good too. He's really good off his back, he has a good triangle off his back. I think defensively as well, Struve has been improving there too. I, I don't see him getting hit clean as much as he used to. And I see him, because I, I think he's training under Black Zillions now. I see him actually using his range just a little better these days. And because of that, uh, I am going to pick Stefan Struve to win this one. Uh, Emelianchuk's pretty tough. Uh, so I'm going to go... Step and Struve to be able to keep on check at range. Once again, I, like I'm trusting that he'll be able to do that because you know in the past he hasn't. Like the shorter fighter tends to get in on him and like blast him, you know. But I'm trusting that Struve will be able to keep the fight at range at a distance he likes. If it goes to the ground, I think Struve's actually really good there. And um, Emelianchuk's tough. I just have a hard time seeing him really get inside. So I'm going to go step and Struve to win by decision. Next one after that, Mursad Bektik fights Jeremy JBC Kennedy. Kennedy, 9 0, undefeated record, 3 wins by K. Ortico, 2 wins by Sub. 24 years old, he's 5'11. Uh, he's taking this fight on short notice. Last time he fought was against Alessandro Ricci, right? Yeah, Alex Ricci. Uh, in that fight, he showed a very much just a wall and stall, wall and maul style of fighting. He clinched up uh, against Gage, really forced to take down, and just kind of worked that game. Uh, other fights I've seen him, like he does take fights to the ground. His Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills are good, seems to have a natural incl inclination to take the back. His stand-up, though, looks pretty average. Mursad Bektik, uh, 10 and 0, undefeated record, five wins by Kertiko, two wins by Sub. 25 years old, he's 5'8", training out of ATT. He last fought in May of 2015, where he knocked out uh, Lucas Martins. Uh, Bektik's a strong wrestler. His both offensively and defensively, his takedown defense is really good, and his ground and pound is really good. It is fight-ending ground and pound. His stand-up, as shown in that Lucas Martins fight, I mean, he Martins is mainly a Muay Thai guy, and Bektik outstruck him and knocked him out. Uh, and, and Bektik showed some pretty heavy hands in that fight as well. Um, uh, I like Bektik here and. Pretty much most areas of MMA. I think he's a better striker. I think he's a better wrestler. I don't think Kendi will be able to utilize much of his grappling that well. I think standing back tick is probably the heavier handed guy. Might be just a better striker. Uh, I think back tick's probably the better wrestler. So I am going to go Mursad back tick to win this one. I'll even go by KO or TKO. Okay, on the FS1 prelims, Yuri Marajo Alcantara uh, Alcantara fights Brad One Punch Pickett. Pickett, 25 and 11 record, seven wins by KO Tico, ten wins by Sub. That's just two losses by KO Tico and four losses by Sub. 37 years old, he's 5'6", training out of ATT. He's only won one of his last four fights. That was against Francisco Rivera. Fight I don't think he should have actually got the win in. Uh, Pickett standing has always been something of a brawler. Um, when he uses it, though, his wrestling and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills are highly underrated. He's a good wrestler, has you know, has some strong grappling skills. His defense standing has never been that good. <laughs> this guy get, gets hit clean and gets hit clean a lot. And I think his chin is actually deteriorating. 
Yuri Alcantara, 32 and 7 record with one no contest. 13 wins by Kotiko, 12 wins by Sub. 36 years old, he's 5'9, and he's trading losses and wins. Last time he lost, I believe, last time he fought was against what? Jimmy Havera? Uh, Alcantara is a BJJ black belt and has some strong Muay Thai. He's particularly heavy handed. Uh, the biggest weakness out of Alcantara and why he's lost, like Frankie Signs, for example. And just had close fights against other guys, or and lost other fights. Is his takedown defense is atrocious. I mean, this is a guy that will not fight for underhooks if he's up against a cage, and he can be far too content off of his back. Um, both of them are pretty old for this division at at 135. Contra should be the bigger fighter here, and. Alcantara, in my opinion, doesn't look like he's on the decline quite yet. I think, like, Frankie Science beat him because he just has bad takedown defense. Um, Jimmy Herrera beat him because Jimmy Herrera's a good fighter. <laughs> and throws a lot of volume and pressures his opponent. Brad Pickett is a guy that is still game. But I can't help but feel his chin is greatly deteriorating. Um, and Alcantara, you know, doesn't seem to have a deteriorating chin either. And his skills, like I said, I don't think are really on the decline uh, from for as, as much as I can tell. Uh, so I like Alcantara to actually be able to outstrike Pickett here. Um, I do don't like that Alcantara has some pretty bad takedown defense and the fact that the matter is that Brad Pickett's a pretty good wrestler so I mean if Pickett wants to utilize a more wrestling heavy uh, game he can win this fight um, as long as the fight stays standing though uh, I had to favor Alcantara here he has, he has the range uh, I think he has a better chin at this point he has a variety of strikes too Pickett mainly just punches. Alcantara will use like punches, kicks, knees, and whatnot. So with that said, I, I think this fight's going to stay standing. And because of that, I'm going to go with Yuri Alcantara to win this one. I'll even go by KO or TKO. Next fight after that, Ian NT Ent Whistle fights Rob Font. Rob Font, 12 and 2 record, 5 wins by KO or TKO. Three wins by sub. 29 years old. He's 5'8". Trains out of Team Sit Your Tongue. Uh, Font, his stand-up is actually pretty good. He's shown to be pretty heavy-handed. He's one of the few guys that went to decision with Lineker. Because, uh, you know, Font defensively actually isn't too bad. Uh, a lot of guys either have, like, good offense. Generally have good offense, but they don't have good defense. I think Rob Font's defense is actually pretty good. And his overall grappling is actually pretty good too. His takedown defense isn't too bad. Um, you know, I've seen him actually go for his own offensive takedowns. He's, he's not that bad there either. Ian Ent was so 9 and 3 record. 1 win by Tiko, 7 wins by Sub. He has 2 losses by KO or Tiko. That's the Hooker and um, Alejandro Perez. Both ground and pound finishes. Um, Ent Whistle is 29 years old. He's 5'8", and he's trading losses and wins. He has some... You know what's funny with Ant Whistle? I don't actually know much. I can't really tell if he has good BJJ or if he's just a pure leg lock specialist. Like, you can see guys like Husamar Pallaras or, like, Marcin Howald. It's like Marcin Howald has won by, like, triangle choke along with, like, foot lock and leg locks, you know? Same with Paul Yarez, you know, this guy's won by arm lock, like, Camaro against, like, Jake Shields, arm bars and whatnot. So far, all I've seen from Ent Whistle is just leg locks. I, I don't even know if he has, like, a triangle game or, or a back take game or whatnot. Ent Whistle will pull guard, actually, he tends to pull guard a lot. Stand-up's not that good, and he's susceptible to ground and pound. So, the thing with Ian Atwistle is, like, because he has that one ace up his sleeve, he can always win a fight. But, like, 
I'm hoping that Rob Font is prepared for the ground game of Ant Whistle and like the leg locks and the guard pulls and whatnot. And one thing with Ant Whistle is that he will sell out on a leg lock and just get ground and pounded to dust. Happened against uh, Daniel Hooker and against Alejandro Perez. Um, I can actually see that happening here. I really can. Because I don't think Ant Whistle has much for Font standing. Um, I think Font's going to be better standing. Font's just got to mind his P's and Q's on the ground. Not get leg locked. Um, you know, as long as he do does that and, and fights a disciplined game, I can actually see Font defend the takedowns and, you know, unleash ground and pound. Wouldn't surprise me. So, um, I'm going to go with Rob Font to win this one. I'll also go by KO Tico here. It wouldn't surprise me to see another ground and pound finish. Next fight after that, uh, Dangerous Davy Grant fights Damian Webster Stasiak. Stasiak, 9-3 record, 1 win by KO, 6 wins by sub, 26 years old, he's 5'8". And actually, you know, the thing with Stasiak is he actually has a base in karate. But, interestingly enough, I mean, you can see it in his record, 6 subs. And you can see it in, um, like in his last fight, for example. He has kind of just been a takedown, take the back and utilize like uh, more of a grappling Brazilian Jiu Jitsu game. His offensive takedown ability is actually pretty good. He's, he's actually a pretty good wrestler. And his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills on the ground are pretty solid. Um, Davy Grant, 10 and 2 record, 1 win by Tico, 8 wins by sub. He also has 2 losses by sub, 30 years old. He's 5'8. Um, you know, I actually find a lot of similarities with Grant and Stajak. Uh, Grant is a pretty good wrestler. He can take fights to the ground. Ground and pound's not too bad. Um, but his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills are, are actually quite solid. Um, in his last fight, though, he fought, uh, jeez, uh, Chito. He fought Chito Vera, if I'm not mistaken. And he just, he beat him up pretty good. Like, he was actually beating him up standing, you know, Grant's stand-up isn't anything special, but it was it's solid. Like he, he just looked like a solid striker, and his wrestling and, gra and grappling game are, are just good. You know they're um, I'd, I'd I'd go and say above average, um, but yeah, I, I like I said that I think these guys are kind of similar. You know they both have a tendency to take the fight to the ground. Both of them only have one knockout to their records and their, and most of their wins are by submission to both the same height um it's really hard to say who has a clear advantage here but um i'm gonna go with davy grant here to win this one not at all confident in this pick because stadiac like i said i think is stylistically quite similar to grant um, I would argue that at this point, from what I saw in the Cheeto fight versus what I've seen from Stasiak, that, like, Grant probably has the more, has, like, might have the better stand-up game, just as far as just a fundamentally sound game. Uh, wrestling-wise and jujitsu wise <laughs> they might actually just cancel each other out. I can see him trying to get takedowns on each other, and... and I can see him getting takedowns. I don't know if they can keep their opponent down. Uh, but, yeah. Tough one for me to call because I can't actually predict how the fight's going to go. Uh, I'm going to just go Davy Grant to win this one by decision. Can't say I'm overtly confident in that pick, though, because they're just too similar. Next fight after that, Leon Rocky Edwards fights Albert Einstein Tumanov. Tumanov, 17-3 record, 11 wins by Kerotiko, 6 wins by decision. 24 years old, he's 5'11", trains out of K-Dojo Warrior Tribe. Strong boxer with really good combinations uh, and particularly heavy-handed, really good left hook. Uh, Tumanov's left hook is uh, arguably fight ending. His takedown defense is actually pretty good despite what he saw in the Gunnar Nelson fight. Um... It was a bit worrisome, though, in that Gunner Nelson fight, how susceptible 
two knobs seemed to be to the jab. And then the other thing that was a bit worrisome was how susceptible Tumanov was in the Larkin fight to leg kicks. Uh, Leon Edwards, 11-3 record, 5 wins by Kaotiko, 2 wins by Sub, 25 years old, he's 5'10". Uh, Edwards' stand-up is pretty solid. He's uh, heavy-handed and a good counter-striker as well. Um, his takedown defense, despite what you saw against like Kamaru Usman, is actually pretty solid. His biggest problem is that it is a volume problem. Uh, he throws a lot of single strikes. He is not much of a combination puncher. And um, it's actually cost him before. Uh, I can actually see this fight being something turning out to be a an aggressor versus counter striker affair. Where like Two Mouth will be more of the aggressor versus Leon Edwards it will play the role of counter striker. Um, especially since Leon Edwards just throws all, so many single strikes. And Tumanov really, he, he throws a good amount of combinations in his boxing. Can't really see this fight hitting the ground too much. Um, but I think if that's the case, unless Edwards really cracks Tumanov, or else if he can play a range game, I don't know if he can, like with jabs and leg kicks. I, I just haven't seen that from Leon Edwards. Um, I can see Tumnov winning this one. I have, uh, I have Tumnov winning this. I think that he's just going to throw just a bit more. Um, Tumnov, like I said, good combination striker. Uh, particularly dangerous left hook. And, uh, yeah. So, I'll go Albert Tumnov to win this one by decision. Okay, on the UFC Fight Pass prelims, Mike Platinum Perry Fights Danny Hot Chocolate Roberts. Perry, 8-0, undefeated record with all of those wins by Kao or Tico. Uh, he's 25 years old, 5'10", and a finisher who's never been past the second round. Um, he just got a huge, or a pretty big upset win over Hung Yu Lin last time out. And is already back uh, to another fight. His stand-up's actually pretty good. He is heavy-handed. But his defense standing is... It, you know, I've seen it in the regional scene, and even in the Hungry Lum fight, it's not that great. Danny Roberts, 13 and one record, five wins by KO Tico, five wins by Sub. He's six foot on a seven fight win streak. Uh, Danny Roberts actually has a pretty good boxing game. Uh, he did get hit clean in that lot in that one fight against um, Steele, Dominic Steele. And his grappling game actually is improving. His takedown defense isn't very good. But I see some improvement there. And he does go for subs. Actually from his back and whatnot. Um, here's the thing with Mike Perry. Like, he still seems very raw. And as good as that win was against Hung Yu Lim. I'll say it again. Hung Yu Lim was more or less running into those punches. I mean seriously. He was... There was actually one point in the fight where he ra he literally ran into the punch. He just kind of like goes forward in a very reckless way and just got countered hard. <laughs> um, the thing with Roberts is like he has a more technically technical game than Hung Yu Lim. Um, and, and just a more disciplined game than Hung Yu Lim. Still worried me that he did get dropped. And that uh, Dominic Steele fight. And a guy like Perry, who hits as hard as he does, can do the same. But I think Danny Roberts at this time just has a better technical game. I think standing, he's a more technical striker. Whereas Perry is obviously the harder hitter. And then Roberts has been working on his ground game as well. His five wins by sub. Uh, so I think Danny is just a more well-rounded fighter. And I'll go Danny Roberts to win this one by a uh, decision. Uh, next fight of that, Adriano Martins fights Leonardo Santos. Adriano Martins, 28 and seven records, 13 wins by K.O. Tico, three wins by Sub. Also has two losses by K.O. Tico, and, and he's 33 years old. He's 5'10 on a three fight win streak and last fought in October 2015. I wanna say that was against um, 
what Islam Makachev, where he knocked him out. Martins is big for 155. He's a legit BJJ black belt, really good on top. Uh, solid boxer with heavy hands, and his wrestling is good too. Leonardo Santos, 15 and 3 record with one draw, two wins by KO Tico, nine wins by Sub. 36 years old, he's six foot on a three fight win streak, training at a Nova Uniao, and he's an Ultimate Fighter winner. He too is big for 155. Uh, he's also a legit BJJ black belt with good offensive takedown ability. And as shown in that Kevin Lee fight, his stand-up, you know what? Actually, not just in the Kevin Lee fight, but just progressively, you know that his stand-up is improving. Um, and he knocked out Kevin Lee. These guys are really similar. Both BJJ black belts. Both. Um, one guy's 33, one guy's 36. Both huge for the weight class uh both brazilian i'd say martins though is farther along in the stand-up department whereas leonardo santos is just kind of he's starting to he's just starting that it seems like he's starting now to put it together now i kept repeating that um i can see martins actually keeping this fight standing though um and I think he's going to be just the heavier handed striker here. Uh, I think on the ground, both can do. They might even just cancel each other. I think Leonardo Santos is probably better on the ground. You know what, man? It, that's tough to say. <laughs> that is really tough to say. Because, like, you know, Martins is no slouch on the ground. Um, but I, I like Adrian Martins here to be able to. Probably outstrike Leonardo Santos, defend the takedowns, and just work that game. So I am going to go Adriano Martins to win this one. Leonardo Santos is actually pretty tough, so I'll go Adriano Martins to win by decision. And finally, Mark Bonecrusher Dia Casey fights Reza Mad Dog Madadi. Madadi, 14 and 4 record, 2 wins by KO Tico, 8 wins by Sub. He's 38 years old, 5'11, training out of All Stars. Uh, he's trading wins and losses right now. And most recently, he knocked out his uh, and, and his last fight, he knocked out his opponent. Uh, and Resident Madadi is really not known for stand up on a technical level. It's pretty, av it's shown to be pretty average. But he does have some strong Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills, particularly good front chokes, and is a good wrestler. Um, he mainly finishes takedowns against the cage, uh, and then works from there. Uh, his cardio has been a bit questionable, though, and he seems very susceptible to range strikes. Like, if he can't get in, he seems kind of lost. Mark Diacasey, 9-0, undefeated record, 4 wins by Kaotika, 1 win by Sub, 23 years old, he's 5'10". Uh, according to, to uh, the Fight Finder, he, it says that he also trains out of sh uh, All-Stars and, and another gym as well. It's his first fight in the UFC. Um, so I actually watched three of Dia Casey's uh, fights. Uh, his last two fights, he knocked out his opponents. And then the other two fights were actually a little more grappling heavy. So what I liked from his stand-up, this guy's really athletic. One, first things first, the guy's a good athlete. He throws some really quick, sharp strikes. He has particularly good kicks, both to the leg and the head, and is pretty heavy-handed. His offensive takedown ability isn't too bad. There's one fight I saw of his where he was actually just grinding his opponent against a cage and working takedowns from there. But it still seemed like it was more strength than technique that got him to takedowns. Um, another fight, he fought a better grappler uh, and did pretty well there. His takedown defense isn't bad, but it's not great either. The biggest problem with the AKC2 in this fight Two fights that I saw him. I think it was, uh, what, McGann and I think the other guy was Vernon. And those went to decision. Those are the grappling heavy fights. And in both of those fights, this is quite worrisome, especially against a guy like Madadi. Dia Casey got his back taken in both of those fights. Uh, I'd say his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills are still on the average side. Uh, that, that tells me, at least, that he's still very much. Yeah, it's still, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is not, like, his strong suit. Um, you know, 
despite the fact that it seemed like he he, he wants to take fights to the ground and whatnot. Uh, I got to say, I, I have a really hard time picking this fight because Dia Casey's potential, 23 years old, 9-0, and uh, with the athletic gifts that he has, um, he can actually go places. And he very much it seems like a pretty good prospect. Uh, the problem is, like I said, when he fought you know, two fights that were more grappling heavy, Dia Casey was put in bad positions. Against a guy like Reza Madadi, who is very good on the ground, that is quite troublesome. I'll say that Dia Casey, though, is probably the better athlete than Reza Madadi. He's younger, obviously, 23 versus Madadi, is 38. Uh, Dia Casey could potentially keep this fight at range, like he does use a lot of range strikes. Um, but, like, Madadi, I think could actually be able to take the fight to the ground and if that happens I don't know what happens with Dia Casey I'm going <sighs> this one I've been going back and forth with uh, but ultimately I went with the younger fighter here I went with Dia Casey he's should be the better athlete the younger fighter I think he's the better striker I'm hoping that he can defend enough takedowns or if he gets taken down that he can get back to his feet in a safe way so with that said, I am going to go Mark Dia Casey to win this one. I'll go by decision because like Reza Madali is a pretty tough guy. Not very confident in this fight at all. And like I said, uh, Reza Madali should be a lot better on the ground than Dia Casey. So, uh, to recap, uh, with Michael Bisming versus Dan Henderson, uh, Michael Bisming be winning by decision. Gega Musasi beating Vitor Balfort by uh, K.O. Tico. Ovin St. Peru over Jimmy Manwa by K.O. Tico. Stefan Struve beating Daniel Omelianchuk by decision. Rasad Bektik over Jimmy Kennedy by, I think it was K.O. Tico. On the FS1 prelims, Javier Alcantara over Brad Pickett by K.O. Tico. Uh, Rob Font over Ian Entwistle by K.O. Ortico. Uh, Davy Grant over Damian Stasiak by decision. And Albert Tumnov over Leon Edwards by decision. On the Fight Pass pre yeah, Fight Pass Premiums, I have Danny Roberts beating Mike Perry. I went by decision if I'm not mistaken here. Adriano Martins beating Leonardo Santos by decision. And Mark Dia Casey over Resmadotti by decision. So that's uh, pretty much it for my predictions for UFC 204 Bisbing versus Henderson 2. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And please check out my author's website at www.chrismaldon.com. You can buy some of my works, starting with my first novel, an action adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for $4.99 on my website or on Amazon.com. And for just $1.99 on Amazon.com and on my website, you can buy uh, some of my short stories and short story collections, such as The Land of the Wooden Statues, The Horror Collection, and The Fantasy Fable Collection. Links to buy these will be provided in the description along with a link to my Twitter page, a link to my author's Facebook page, or, and uh, a link to my, uh, um, my author's YouTube page. So, that's pretty much it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.